Good evening. The presentation will begin in 10 minutes.
Good evening. The presentation will begin in five minutes. Slide one, 
Welcome to the Sun Trail Improvements Project from Kitterman Road to the Savannah's Recreation Area Virtual Public Meeting. Financial Project ID number 439999-3-52-01. Today is Wednesday, July 10th, 2024. Slide 2. Virtual Public Meeting Orientation. My name is Samantha Kaiser, Community Outreach Specialist with the Corradino Group. Today, I will be your moderator and presenter. Tonight's meeting format includes a brief presentation followed by a question and answer session. The first presentation is 5 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. and the second presentation is 5.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. Please note, questions and comments may be submitted via the online chat for the project team to address directly. Slide 3, Non-Discrimination Policy. The Florida Department of Transportation complies with various non-discrimination laws and regulations, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. For questions or concerns, you may contact either Sharon Singh Haigyan at 954-777-4190 or Sharon.SingHaigyan at dot.state.fl.us or Stefan Kulikowski at 850-414-414. 4742 or Stefan at dot.state.fl.us. All inquiries or concerns will be handled according to FDOT procedure and in a prompt and courteous manner. Slide 4 Virtual Public Meeting Orientation. This virtual public meeting is being recorded. All attendees will remain muted throughout the meeting. If you experience technical difficulties, please contact GoToWebinar support at 1-833-851-8340. At the end of the presentation, attendees are welcome to submit any questions or comments using the GoToWebinar question panel and a member of the team will respond during the question and answer portion. To request to speak, Click the raise hand button on the control panel and unmute your microphone when your name is called. Slide 5. Participating on GoToWebinar. We are using the GoToWebinar meeting platform for the meeting. There is no cost to the public to log in or dial in to participate in the meeting. Questions and comments can be entered into the chat feature for the team to address directly. To speak, please click the hand icon during the question and answer session. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the FDOT District 4 website. Slide 6. Meet the team. On the line, we have Marla Hewson, Construction Project Manager, FDOT District 4, Treasure Coast Operations, Aaron Watt, Senior Project Engineer, District 4, Treasure Coast Operations, Embereth Salazar, Construction Project Administrator, Azimuth 360 Consulting Group, Incorporated, James Hughes, Design Project Manager, FDOT District 4, Fernando Gomez, Engineer of Record, Snubs Consulting Incorporated, and Jeff Waite, Contractor, West Construction Incorporated. Slide 7, Meet the Team. On the line, we have Dan J. Zerlack, County Engineer, St. Lucie County. John Jack Andrews, City Engineer, City of Fort Pierce. And Jen McGee, Senior Strategic Planning and Restoration Coordinator, St. Lucie County Environmental Resources Department. Slide 8, 
The Sun Trail Improvements Project aims to enhance the safety, resiliency, and longevity of the new trail and create a vibrant and connected community through safety and accessibility. This project will construct a safe and accessible trail for users of all abilities, health and wellness, increased physical activity opportunities lead to a healthier and happier community. Transportation options. The trail provides a safe and alternative mode of transportation, reducing traffic congestion. Economic boost. Trails have been shown to attract tourism and stimulate economic development along their routes. The Sun Trail is a statewide initiative that connects communities across Florida. By investing in this project, we're investing in the future of our state and building a stronger Florida. Slide nine, project limits. The project limits are from Kitterman Road to the Savannah's Recreation Area in the city of Fort Pierce and unincorporated St. Lucie County. Slide 10, project overview. The purpose of the project is to construct approximately 4.2 miles of 10 foot, eight feet wear constrained, accessible multi-use trail with boardwalk sections. This segment of the shared use non-motorized Sun Trail Network will be located within the Savannah's Preserve State Park, along roadways and within the Canal 22 right of way. The length of the project is 4.2 miles. The contractor is West Construction Incorporated. The construction start is July 21st, 2024. The estimated contract cost is $5.82 million. The estimated completion is late 2025. And the contract time is 413 calendar days, not including weather and holidays. Slide 11, East Coast Greenway Trail. The Sun Trail Improvements Project is part of the East Coast Greenway, a 3,000 mile multi-use trail that runs from Maine to Key West up and down the Eastern seaboard of the US. Once completed, it will touch 15 states and 450 cities. The goal is to create a 10 to 12 foot wide paved trail that is off-road separated from roads. Where implemented in other parts of the country and state, we have seen a wide array of benefits, including alternative transportation opportunities, tourism, economic development, revitalization along the route, and best of all, the health and well being aspects that appeal to generations universally. Slide 12 East Coast Greenway within St. Lucie County. There are 18 miles of East Coast Greenway to build in St. Lucie County. This project continues where the South Sun Trail project ends at Leonard Road and Kitterman Road. This project is one of at least seven segments underway. St. Lucie County has one of the most unique portions of the East Coast Greenway in the state and maybe the county. We touch two downtown city centers, three state parks, the freshwater savannas, the Indian River Lagoon, the beaches and the Atlantic Ocean, many parks and a golf course. Slide 13, safety improvements, new mid-block pedestrian crossings at Easy Street and County Road 712 Midway Road. Safety is the department's top priority and is embedded in all that we do. Mid-block pedestrian crossings will be installed at Easy Street and County Road 712 Midway Road. The image shows an example of a mid-block pedestrian crossing with a rapid rectangular flashing beacon. When activated, the rapidly flashing beacons enhance the visibility of pedestrians at the crossing to motorists. Slide 14, Typical Section, Sun Trail. The trail's elevation was kept close to the natural ground to preserve the natural drainage patterns. The trail may therefore experience brief periods where it remains wet after a storm event. The trail will be 10 feet wide, 
eight feet where constrained with the required slopes for accessibility and safety. Slide 15, rendering of new sun trail. Here we see how the trail might look in a natural setting. Slide 16, typical section, boardwalk. Elevated boardwalks occur in areas where the sun trail crosses water. This occurs within the Savannah's Recreation Area at three locations. Slide 17, Traffic Impact. Single lane closures are permitted during the daytime, Monday through Sunday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on the following streets. Easy Street, Buchanan Drive, Pine Tree Drive, Palmetto Drive, Silver Oak Drive, Sea Grape Drive, Myrtle Drive, Sunset Boulevard, and County Road 712 Midway Road. Slide 18, Construction Phases. In Phase 1 of construction, work includes constructing the mid-block pedestrian crossings on Easy Street and County Road 712 Midway Road, and constructing the shared use path throughout the project limits. Slide 19, construction phases. In phase 2A, work includes milling and resurfacing Easy Street and County Road 712 Midway Road to ensure long-term resilience and installing temporary pavement markings on the new surface to enhance visibility and safety for pedestrians. In Phase 2B of construction, work includes installing final pavement markings on Easy Street and County Road 712 Midway Road to improve visibility and safety for motorists and pedestrians. Slide 20, Safety and Local Coordination. Safety is the department's top priority and is embedded in all that we do. Providing a safe and congestion-free travel way is of the utmost importance to the Florida Department of Transportation. To meet these goals, FDOT and our project partners will provide advanced warning signage throughout the corridor to alert motorists to the ongoing work. Additionally, we will continue to collaborate with our local partners, including local municipalities, schools, neighborhoods, and other local agencies to ensure safety standards are met and the impacts to the public are minimized. Our team will also be coordinating with emergency services to ensure access is provided at all times throughout each corridor. Slide 21, Community Outreach. Community feedback is at the core of all we do. FDOT works with the public to balance their community vision with the community's transportation needs. This is routine on all our projects to ensure Florida's infrastructure is safe, resilient, and efficient for many years into the future. Project update flyers and emails will be distributed as needed, and all project updates will be posted to the District 4 website. To receive project-specific updates or to be added to my weekly press release distributed every Friday, please email me at skaiser at corradino.com. You can also view project updates at www.d4fdot.com. This page will include a link to lane closures, progress photos, and a recording of tonight's presentations. We will now move into the presentation's live At this time, we would like to acknowledge uh, any elected officials that may be on the line with us tonight. You may raise your hand and I will unmute you, or you can type your name into the chat and I will introduce you. So let's see. 
Okay, I got a, um, a raised hand. Jamie Fowler, are you a an elected official? Oh, I just unmuted. Okay. Good evening. I'm uh, the commissioner for District 4, yes. St. Lucie County. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for putting this together. I know I have a lot of residents um, along Buchanan um, and on the other side of the canal that are uh, very eager to learn about the project start date and, um, you know, how it's going to move forward in, in all the phases. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's see if we have anybody else. Okay, it looks like that is it. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Slide 22, questions and answers. To provide a comment, please submit questions and comments using the GoToWebinar question panel. All comments and questions submitted through these options are part of the public record for this virtual meeting. Project team, will you please turn on your cameras? Okay, thank you. Let's see what questions we have. Uh, Hugh Schmidt, you're unmuted. Perfect. Everybody hear me? Yes. Hi, I got a ton of questions. Uh, I'm living here in Buchanan uh, with one of the largest properties here, so I get affected probably the most by everything. On the side, I have Howard Street that's probably going to be used as a staging area, which I had for two years now with FBL. Now I'm going to have the construction here again. First of all, I bought here roughly three years ago. I never got an information. I never got a mail, a email or mail to my personal name about this whole project. I had no saying in it. I was never asked. Uh, also, uh, whatever meeting there was, was in the COVID time. So there was never a, a, a meeting that was personally after COVID, which should have been done with that project. And I got a ton of questions about that whole project that has never ever get answered from you guys. I emailed you so many times, especially Mr. Hughes. You should remember my name uh, because you're one of them on my email list. Uh, most of the other guys I heard here see the names the first time because they were not involved in all the emails we sent out, especially from the, from the association as well. So where are we going to start? Uh, what is what's your your first question? And I'll first see of all, it, se it seems like that certain people never receive any mail in regards okay. of the trail. I'm not the okay. only. One. So uh, either your list is wrong or or it's not in the list. Maybe I'm not on there because I'm a troublemaker. I have no idea. Okay, I do know at least for construction that we did send out a mailer um, for the project limits, uh, which extends out at least 500 feet on that. And we did incorporate our list that was from uh, design as well. And I'm, I sincerely apologize if you have not, uh, that you didn't receive uh, and an then you gotta check your to list this. Because yes. I'm, not on, I'm not on there. Absolutely. Um, so we'll have to reach out to you. I made a note of your name um, so that I can act, get your um, proper mailing address. So we will reach out to you after the meeting. If you can access the sure registration, if you can access the registration file, I'll yep. fill that all out for you. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. I will pull that up and make sure you're on that, um, as well as our email list. So I, I apologize right. for that. Several questions we're having. Uh, I bought that property for my privacy. I never was expecting to have a trail going right through my backyard. Uh, so uh, you can imagine I'm not happy with that. Uh, first question is why was that trail moved from the original location where it was supposed to be on the other side, on the, on the east side of, uh, of the community here, 
uh, to Buchanan. Uh, that cannot be because it's shorter, because it ain't, and because it's cheaper. So I assume because 50 houses is less issues to deal with than 220 houses on the other side. Is that correct? Uh, Fernando or Jim, would you like to field that question, please? Yeah, I can I can start with that. I guess first I want to back up to your originally. I think you mentioned um, sending me numerous emails. I mean, are, what was your name again? Hugh Schmidt. Hugh Schmidt. Part does, of the honestly, Indian, yeah, a part okay, of the Indian River Euro Estates Association. And if you uh, if you might recall, uh, Sean DeSantis, you probably got the same emails from him as well. Yeah, I communicated a lot with John DeSantis for sure. And your name honestly doesn't ring a bell. And believe me, if I'm very responsive. If you had sent me a bunch of emails, I would have responded. And I apologize if somehow, maybe I don't know if you have my email wrong or and and, and as well, no, you should have not. We all we all use the same email list. I, I know well, what, what's going yeah. on. Here. Okay, I don't want to. I'm not going to argue with you, but yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, I mean uh, yeah. besides of that, I don't want to argue that either. I, I I like to know why why is the why was that whole thing moved from the original planning. I mean, it really wasn't moved. We did a feasibility study, and that was evaluated on both sides, the mm -hmm. the east side and in the canal right away. And ultimately, I think the canal right away was chosen for several reasons. You mentioned it, it, it does impact less homes, and community involvement was a big part of the the feasibility process. And it's also less environmental impacts was a big part of it, because you know, going through the park, there's a lot of wetlands, and and I know. Yeah, that so that was definitely a big part of it as well. So it was probably those two primary things were the reason it was chosen. And it was basically, you know, a no cost right away was a third. You know, even though it wasn't, there's no cost for the right away in the park. But we had we did have to acquire an easement. We basically it was part of a permit with the water control district. They allowed us to construct the canal through their right away for free. Uh, that's another issue on the canal. I mean, you, you've been out here. I know that uh, you know that canal is pretty steep, six to ten feet at some places. Uh, and then the way it's going to be built up, the, the road going to be another two feet higher. The way it looks from uh, the pictures I just saw. How are you going to, guys? That's another question that was never answered. How are you going to, guys? Uh, make sure that nobody falls in there like a dog or a kid with a bicycle or whatever, and and uh, nothing bad going to happen. The the trail is a good distance away from the canal. It's it's on the other the, the eastern right away line. It's a very good distance and well with outside the any kind of clear zone or or you know, fall hazards. <laughs> All right, uh, you've been out here, right? You know how many feet you got between the canal and the property lines? Yes. All right, if you put a 10 foot wide path in there, plus three feet on each side, green, plus a hedge that's supposed to come there, which is another three or four feet. I don't know, you, in my opinion, you're gonna run out of space, but we will see that when it starts. Jim, I can add to, to the, um, the drop-off hazard uh, question. The, uh, the trail, the way that it was constructed and the separation from the canal top of bank is outside of what would be considered a drop-off hazard uh, even though it, it does get more narrow in some places compared to others and no place does it uh, encroach into the the proximity near, uh, near the trail that it would be deemed a drop-off hazard well, you, you're aware of that that canal is pretty brittle and after every big rain, uh, big uh, pieces are dropping in that they need to fix all the time. Also, there's some issues on the water runoff, like from Howard Street, it goes in there, which is not, the canal is not even the runoff for Indian River Estates. Uh, that's just a courtesy thing from my understanding, from my talks with the water district. Uh, somebody got to, uh, I don't know, man, I'm just, it's a concern for me. The next thing is the water runoff. The way the way I saw the plan now, which is the first time I saw that layout, uh, 
there's a big boom on, on, on the side of the property owners here that's from digging out the canal that holds the water off right now to running into our properties after big rain. Uh, that will be gone because uh, the way going to be raised and then uh, and then they're going to fall down. So that means I get at least a good amount of rain running off into my property now. I can handle that, Jim. So my my firm uh, designed the vertical profile of the of the trail, and it was designed to allow all natural drain of drainage patterns to be maintained. So even though the uh, the trail is slightly higher than the natural terrain, uh, it is intended to be overtopped. The trail is intended to be overtopped when there is a, a storm event uh, in order to preclude any any flooding and so that the trail itself does not act uh, as a dam. All right. So okay, you're telling I'm me really you're telling sorry. me you're telling me you're gonna be you're gonna build like water runoffs under it that run over to the canal uh, to drain the water out or how's that supposed to work? Again, I asked for the plans which I got told for a couple of weeks ago that they're already out there and nobody seems to have them. I was not able to obtain them. We have uh, versions of the plans here at the public meeting, the uh, in-person well, public I meeting. Gonna, I'm gonna be there later on too. I'd like to take a look at that. Okay, yeah. And to answer your question about um, water equalization from one side of the trail to the other, yeah, there are equalizer culverts placed at strategic points along the trail to ensure that uh, the natural drainage flow is not impeded. Okay, I'm, I'm terribly sorry to interrupt, but um, that's the last question that we can take at this moment. We have to finish up our first segment of the presentation. Um, if we have not Sweet. gotten to your question yet, uh, we will answer it during our next segment. Um, so at this time, uh, project team, you can turn off your cameras. And um, uh, Mr. Schmidt, if you, um, I know you said you're going to be in attendance, so we can absolutely address any additional questions um, at during our next segment of the virtual meeting, which is from 5.30 to 6 p.m. and or in person as well. Um, and if you submitted questions in the chat, we are trying to address those um, as we go along. Uh, so without further ado, we will continue with the presentation and then begin our next segment at 5.30 p.m. Slide 23, contact us. Serving communities is at the center of all we do. FDOT works with the public to balance their community vision with the community's transportation needs. This is routine on all our projects to ensure Florida's infrastructure is safe, resilient, and efficient for many years into the future. If you have questions or comments throughout the project, please submit them via email or phone to Samantha Kaiser, Community Outreach Specialist at S. Kaiser at Corradino.com or by phone at 772-579-5479. Marla Hewson, Construction Project Manager, and her email is marla.hewson at dot.state.fl.us. And the phone number is 772-349-6738 or Embrith Salazar, Construction Project Administrator, at embrith s at azimuth 360.cc or by phone at 786-306-9269. Please note this PowerPoint presentation has been uploaded to GoToWebinar for download. Slide 24, FDOT Safety Message. July is Vehicle Theft Prevention Month. What you should know. Prevent vehicle theft by parking in well-lit areas, stowing away valuables, and locking cars and windows. Do not leave your keys in the car and never leave your vehicle while it's running. Slide 25. Thank you for attending today's virtual public meeting.
Slide 1. Welcome to the Sun Trail Improvements Project from Kitterman Road to the Savannah's Recreation Area Virtual Public Meeting. Financial Project ID number 439999-3-52-01. Today is Wednesday, July 10th, 2024. Slide 2. Virtual Public Meeting Orientation. My name is Samantha Kaiser, Community Outreach Specialist with the Corradino Group. Today, I will be your moderator and presenter. Tonight's meeting format includes a brief presentation followed by a question and answer session. The first presentation is 5 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. and the second presentation is 5.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. Please note, questions and comments may be submitted via the online chat for the project team to address directly. Slide 3, Non-Discrimination Policy. The Florida Department of Transportation complies with various non-discrimination laws and regulations, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. For questions or concerns, you may contact either Sharon Singh Haigyan at 954-777-4190 or Sharon.SingHaigyan at dot.state.fl.us or Stefan Kulikowski at 850-414-414. 4742 or stefan.kulikowski at dot.state.fl.us. All inquiries or concerns will be handled according to FDOT procedure and in a prompt and courteous manner. Slide 4 Virtual Public Meeting Orientation. This virtual public meeting is being recorded. All attendees will remain muted throughout the meeting. If you experience technical difficulties, please contact GoToWebinar support at 1-833-851-8340. At the end of the presentation, attendees are welcome to submit any questions or comments using the GoToWebinar question panel and a member of the team will respond during the question and answer portion. To request to speak, Click the raise hand button on the control panel and unmute your microphone when your name is called. Slide 5. Participating on GoToWebinar. We are using the GoToWebinar meeting platform for the meeting. There is no cost to the public to log in or dial in to participate in the meeting. Questions and comments can be entered into the chat feature for the team to address directly. To speak, please click the hand icon during the question and answer session. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the FDOT District 4 website. Slide 6. Meet the team. On the line, we have Marla Hewson, Construction Project Manager, FDOT District 4, Treasure Coast Operations, Aaron Watt, Senior Project Engineer, District 4, Treasure Coast Operations, Embereth Salazar, Construction Project Administrator, Azimuth 360 Consulting Group, Incorporated, James Hughes, Design Project Manager, FDOT District 4, Fernando Gomez, Engineer of Record, Snubs Consulting, Incorporated, and Jeff Waite, Contractor, West Construction Incorporated. Slide seven, meet the team. On the line, we have Dan J. Zerlack, County Engineer, St. Lucie County. John Jack Andrews, City Engineer, City of Fort Pierce. And Jen McGee, Senior Strategic Planning and Restoration Coordinator, St. Lucie County Environmental Resources Department. Slide 8. 
The Sun Trail Improvements Project aims to enhance the safety, resiliency, and longevity of the new trail and create a vibrant and connected community through safety and accessibility. This project will construct a safe and accessible trail for users of all abilities, health and wellness, increased physical activity opportunities lead to a healthier and happier community. Transportation options. The trail provides a safe and alternative mode of transportation, reducing traffic congestion. Economic boost. Trails have been shown to attract tourism and stimulate economic development along their routes. The Sun Trail is a statewide initiative that connects communities across Florida. By investing in this project, we're investing in the future of our state and building a stronger Florida. Slide 9, Project Limits. The project limits are from Kitterman Road to the Savannah's Recreation Area in the City of Fort Pierce and unincorporated St. Lucie County. Slide 10, Project Overview. The purpose of the project is to construct approximately 4.2 miles of 10 foot, 8 feet wear constrained, accessible multi-use trail with boardwalk sections. This segment of the shared use non-motorized Sun Trail Network will be located within the Savannah's Preserve State Park, along roadways, and within the Canal 22 right-of-way. The length of the project is 4.2 miles, the contractor is West Construction Incorporated. The construction start is July 21st, 2024. The estimated contract cost is $5.82 million. The estimated completion is late 2025. And the contract time is 413 calendar days, not including weather and holidays. Slide 11, East Coast Greenway Trail. The Sun Trail Improvements Project is part of the East Coast Greenway, a 3,000 mile multi-use trail that runs from Maine to Key West up and down the Eastern seaboard of the US. Once completed, it will touch 15 states and 450 cities. The goal is to create a 10 to 12 foot wide paved trail that is off-road, separated from roads. Where implemented in other parts of the country and state, we have seen a wide array of benefits, including alternative transportation opportunities, tourism, economic development, revitalization along the route, and best of all, the health and well being aspects that appeal to generations universally. Slide 12 East Coast Greenway within St. Lucie County. There are 18 miles of East Coast Greenway to build in St. Lucie County. This project continues where the South Sun Trail Project ends at Leonard Road and Kitterman Road. This project is one of at least seven segments underway. St. Lucie County has one of the most unique portions of the East Coast Greenway in the state and maybe the county. We touch two downtown city centers, three state parks, the freshwater savannas, the Indian River Lagoon, the beaches and the Atlantic Ocean, many parks, and a golf course. Slide 13, safety improvements, new mid-block pedestrian crossings at Easy Street and County Road 712 Midway Road. Safety is the department's top priority and is embedded in all that we do. Mid-block pedestrian crossings will be installed at Easy Street and County Road 712 Midway Road. The image shows an example of a mid-block pedestrian crossing with a rapid rectangular flashing beacon. When activated, the rapidly flashing beacons enhance the visibility of pedestrians at the crossing to motorists. Slide 14, Typical Section, Sun Trail. The trail's elevation was kept close to the natural ground to preserve the natural drainage patterns. The trail may therefore experience brief periods where it remains wet after a storm event. The trail will be 10 feet wide, 
eight feet wear constrain with the required slopes for accessibility and safety. Slide 15, rendering of new sun trail. Here we see how the trail might look in a natural setting. Slide 16, typical section, boardwalk. Elevated boardwalks occur in areas where the sun trail crosses water. This occurs within the Savannah's recreation area at three locations. Slide 17, traffic impact. Single lane closures are permitted during the daytime, Monday through Sunday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on the following streets. Easy Street, Buchanan Drive, Pine Tree Drive, Palmetto Drive, Silver Oak Drive, Sea Grape Drive, Myrtle Drive, Sunset Boulevard, and County Road 712 Midway Road. Slide 18, Construction Phases. In Phase 1 of construction, work includes constructing the mid-block pedestrian crossings on Easy Street and County Road 712 Midway Road and constructing the shared use path throughout the project limits. Slide 19, Construction Phases. In Phase 2A, work includes milling and resurfacing Easy Street and County Road 712 Midway Road to ensure long-term resilience and installing temporary pavement markings on the new surface to enhance visibility and safety for pedestrians. In Phase 2B of construction, work includes installing final pavement markings on Easy Street and County Road 712 Midway Road to improve visibility and safety for motorists and pedestrians. Slide 20, Safety and Local Coordination. Safety is the department's top priority and is embedded in all that we do. Providing a safe and congestion-free travel way is of the utmost importance to the Florida Department of Transportation. To meet these goals, FDOT and our project partners will provide advanced warning signage throughout the corridor to alert motorists to the ongoing work. Additionally, we will continue to collaborate with our local partners, including local municipalities, schools, neighborhoods, and other local agencies to ensure safety standards are met and the impacts to the public are minimized. Our team will also be coordinating with emergency services to ensure access is provided at all times throughout each corridor. Slide 21, Community Outreach. Community feedback is at the core of all we do. FDOT works with the public to balance their community vision with the community's transportation needs. This is routine on all our projects to ensure Florida's infrastructure is safe, resilient, and efficient for many years into the future. Project update flyers and emails will be distributed as needed, and all project updates will be posted to the District 4 website. To receive project-specific updates or to be added to my weekly press release distributed every Friday, please email me at skaiser at corradino.com. You can also view project updates at www.d4fdot.com. This page will include a link to lane closures, progress photos, and a recording of tonight's presentations. We will now move into the presentation's live At this time, we would like to take a moment to recognize any elected officials who may be on the line with us. You may raise your hand and I will unmute you, or you can type your name into the chat and I will introduce you. So just give everyone a moment. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any elected officials on the line, so we will continue with the presentation. Slide 22, questions and answers. To provide a comment, please submit questions and comments using the GoToWebinar question panel. 
All comments and questions submitted through these options are part of the public record for this virtual meeting. Project team, will you please turn on your cameras? Thank you. So our first question is, who will pay to remove the turtles? Um, Embrith, uh, would you like to field that question, please? Can you hear me? Yes, okay. <clears throat> so um, the section that it falls into the FDOT right way is gonna be part of the department. The department is in charge to, to relocate the, the GTs from there, but the section that falls in a different areas is the contractor responsibility to, to do the relocation. Okay, thank you. And what is the landscape buffer? Jen, would you like to field that question? Yes, um, the county has already uh, awarded and gone out to bid for installation of over 7,000 Clusia rosea um, hedge materials. It'll be a double um, row of staggered hedge um, to provide a buffer for the residents. Okay, thank you. Oh my God. And, um, we have, uh, why does the trail need to go down Buchanan instead of through the preserve? Fernando or Jim, would you like to field that, please? And I can start, and if Fernando wants to add anything. I mean, we did a feasibility study where, where both were evaluated, both through the canal right away and on the east side. And ultimately, the, through the canal right away was chosen due to several factors, including the part we got a permit with no cost right away. It was less impact to less number of residents and it was less environmental impacts were the primary reasons. Okay. And let's see if you have any other questions. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any additional questions at this time. So project team, you can turn your cameras off and we will continue with the presentation. Slide 23, contact us. Serving communities is at the center of all we do. FDOT works with the public to balance their community vision with the community's transportation needs. This is routine on all our projects to ensure Florida's infrastructure is safe, resilient, and efficient for many years into the future. If you have questions or comments throughout the project, please submit them via email or phone to Samantha Kaiser, Community Outreach Specialist at skaiser at corradino.com or by phone at 772-579-5479. Marla Hewson, Construction Project Manager, and her email is marla.hewson at dot.state.fl.us, and the phone number is 772-349-6738, or Embrith Salazar, Construction Project Administrator at embrith s at azimuth360.cc, or by phone at 786 3069269. Please note this PowerPoint presentation has been uploaded to GoToWebinar for download. Slide 24 FDOT Safety Message July is Vehicle Theft Prevention Month. What you should know Prevent vehicle theft by parking in well lit areas, stowing away valuables, and locking cars and windows. Do not leave your keys in the car and never leave your vehicle while it's running. Slide 25, 
Thank you for attending today's virtual public meeting.